host Gary Fox and uh, tonight we're going to talk about QCS again. Uh, this time we're going to uh, I got about three things to talk about. First one is how do you get even better documentation because I'm learning this right now and as I learn it I'm teaching you what I know but I am learning at the same time and uh, you may have some other questions besides what I'm teaching you. Okay, if you go to QUCS, just do a Google and you go to the main page, which is what I've just done. Go to the support tab on this thing. And uh, they show standalone tutorials. I got the getting started, which is uh, the one, the help screens that's on the actual program. They've got some others in here, and there's a bunch of them here that I'd like to go through myself, and I will. Uh, but the main one I want to show you tonight is called Workbook. If you type in, if you click on Workbook, you're going to get a gigantic PDF file, 559 pages. Uh, however, it's very, very thorough. So let's go through this thing uh, and just look at the... Uh, contents and uh, as you go through this thing you'll see that they have it starts with getting started with QC, QUCS and that's the one that's on the uh, help screen but as you go on down here you'll find uh, different ones that gives you a lot more things to do and for instance I may want to try to learn how to do a sweep in DC uh, matter of fact, we'll be doing that pretty soon. And we'll also be doing it where we have a, uh, a digital input going into a uh, transistor. And then uh, <clears throat> it allows you to use SPICE programs that everybody has already done. But the biasing of a BJ, BJT transistor... Uh, I am going to look at that one and read a little bit more detail on it. I'll be bringing that up in my blog. But uh, there is, I just learned some stuff here on the BJT modeling and verification. So we will talk a little bit about that. Uh, not a lot yet because we haven't learned enough in the blog to talk about all of this stuff. So. Uh, this is where, this is like the mother load of information about QUCS. I'm obviously not going to print this thing out. I'm going to be looking at it off and on though. Okay, we're going to go into QUCS. Now I want to show you a little bit about how it actually works. So we're going to go to this program called Test My Knowledge. Which I just create a very simple program. As you can see, I left all the resistors at uh, the default values. And I'm going to unname this. And uh, we're going to run a simulation on it. We run a simulate. And we got a value down there. It worked, obviously. And what I'm going to show you is that if you go to last messages you can see that there were no errors in that when it ran also we'll go to the simulation where we show the last net list and what it says here is that R1 is connected from net 0 to net 1 R2 is connected from ground to net 0 and 3 is connected from ground to net 1 well, that's pretty nice, except what is net 1, net 2? Well, that turns out to be these connections up here. I'd call them nodes, actually, but they call them net. So, we'll, let's give them some names. We'll call this one B. And I'll call this one over here Bop. B Bop. Okay, and now let's go ahead and we'll run the simulation again. 
We'll go back here, we'll look at the net list. And you see that R1 runs from B to BOP, or BOP to B. R2 runs from ground to BOP, which it does. And R3 runs from ground to B. And VDC runs from B to ground. So now you can actually see where these things are connected up. And uh, that's pretty daggone useful when you start trying to figure this thing out. You also see that there's a lot of parameters that were hidden in the uh, resistor. If I do a uh, click on the resistor, edit properties, we only inputted the resistance into it, but it's got a temperature that's being ran at, and it's got a nominal temperature when you decide it was 50 ohms. Uh, and then there's a temperature constant that's in there, none of which I know. But uh, we can actually simulate what will happen to a circuit as it gets hotter and hotter. And we will know that, hopefully someday. As I find stuff out, I will point it out to you all. Uh, probably in the uh, blog, but I will try to point it out as I find it. I've got a lot of documentation to read myself. Okay. So anyhow, now you know a little bit about how net lists are set up. And the way the program works is that it takes a schematic, it generates a net list, then it takes a net list and does the uh, actual simulation off of that net list. So it's a two-step process there. Well, what will happen, let's say, if we don't have some things connected up. Let's run the simulation. And now we'll go back. And it gives me a little different answer, but it doesn't gripe about anything. If I show the last net list, uh, it says that R2 R is connected from ground to net zero. And R3, or now let's go to ground to net zero. Let's go to R1. R1 is connected from net one to B. But it doesn't say anything about, okay, net one has only got one thing connected to it. It doesn't gripe about it. So, the only thing that lets you know that those are not connected is those little red circles right there. And uh, that's something to look at on your schematics. However, if you accidentally draw a wire, a wire, You can have wires hanging out there that uh, will mess you up. See, I got a wire hanging, but I actually got a circuit. Uh, so, sometimes those are a little bit of a hassle right there, but it will not tell you that you have a problem. Okay, we're going to save this, and we're going to open up a new project. Okay, and I'm going to show you why all that knowledge about uh, the numbers are important. We'll run this. We'll run the... Uh, I don't want to do that one. The nonlinear project. Okay, this is the one we set up la uh, on the last video. Okay. If I run simulation and I run the uh, DC bias, it all works. What I had done that drove me crazy, edit properties, I had accidentally inputted into one of these an extra decimal point. So I was doing OK. I now do a simulate. And it says, hey, you got a big problem. Line 12, syntax error. Uh, and I'm like, what does that mean? So I close the window. I can also see that by showing the last message. And it says, I got an error and it aborted the program. It says, I unexpected real expecting quotes. You go, 
whoa, what does that mean? Because that really meant nothing to me. But it says it was on net 12. So if I go to uh, last net list, it's on line 12. And I go to the net list. You see where it says line number right up here? As I go down this thing, that line number increases. Line 12 is on the one about the transistor. So I know it's something to do with the transistor's parameters. So I quit. And uh, edit parameters. I did a right click on it, by the way. You highlight it. Let's do a select. You highlight the item, and then you right click on it, and then you have the choice of edit parameters. And I look down here at each one of these numbers, and eventually I find, after a long, long time, that I got an extra decimal point. I correct it. I run the simulation, and it worked. Okay, now I got to back up and show you something that uh, save it, close that project, show you something I just learned. Okay, I have a new schematic here. That's basically the same as the other schematic. Deal is the transistor's missing. We could go to components and we could pick a transistor and put it in like I did last night, but I found out there's a better way. If we go to tools and we go to component library, and then I pick transistors, and I go to 2N3904. It's in the library, and it says drop and drag me, so I'll drop and drag it into there, stick it in the schematic, and now we will exit this, highlight that thing, edit properties. All of the properties have been inputted for me. I didn't have to go to the, uh, find the spice model. They're already there. And if I do an OK, I could have done a cancel since I didn't change anything. Simulation, let's calculate the bias, it's all working. And if I compare that to the previous model, which I have saved a picture of. So I'll go in here to pictures, screenshot from the other one. I compare the numbers, they don't exactly match up, which says that their model is a little different than my model. And that's kind of be expected, but uh, I would say that their model is probably more accurate because it's been designed for this system. Plus, this is a little bit newer program than Spice is. Spice has been around for a long, long time. So I would trust the values in this model better since it was available in their library. However, I will spend some time looking at it and trying to find. The other thing I want to point out when I do simulation, I go to to last net list. If I go to that transistor model right there, it says uh, it's going from net net 2 to Q2C, and from net 1 to Q2C, and uh, that's interesting since I only have three connections on it, why there's four connections on a transistor, they must have some reason that they did it that way, and uh, I'll be naming the rest of these a lot more to figure out what uh, net 2 and net 1 is, I'm just curious. And that's the way you learn. And that's the way that I try to figure things out, by the way. So, anyhow, showed you several different things. I showed you, number one, how Netlist works. Showed you how to use it if you have to troubleshoot. Because uh, somehow or another you've punched in something wrong in your model. And then the last one I showed you is a much better way to get the parameters for devices that are on their... Uh, that are 
in their component library. So I showed you where to find a component library. And then I also showed you some really good documentation. That workbook will allow you to uh, use this program. And it seems to be well written. It's just long, but it's well written. It has lots of, uh, lots of pictures in it. Lots of ways of showing you how, how to uh, negotiate it. The, pro, the uh, workbook is written in English, but it looks like somebody is translating it into Russian. I'm sorry about the other languages, but if you're putting up with my videos, you obviously know English. Um, and then that's an opportunity for you if you want to translate into another language. And, that's, and the other language is your native tongue. Anyhow, appreciate you uh, listening. Obviously, I'm running out of energy. And uh, hopefully you got something out of this thing. Thank you. This is Gary Fox of Create and Make.